Well, it was a bit of a, a rounded way. I, got, I, I started setting up a business to, um, it was like a bond store. When antiques were brought into Australia, they had to go through customs, they had to be inspected. So we got that business up, to, about to start, and then the, the regulators and the customs people decided to change their inspection regime from every container to one in a hundred or one in a thousand. So our business, before it got going, went down the toilet. So we were left with a, a large building and, and luckily I'd gone past one of these places. I think there were a group of guys, the Bushels, who owned uh, a few cell storage places here and Blair Fry's father, I think, owned a few. And so I just, I happened to be going past one day and walked in and thought, well, what a very good idea. And of course, on paper, uh, you can make them look really good because you don't put any eyeways in, you don't, you don't know anything. You, you know, there's no precursor to what you're meant to, to know, no knowledge. Well, it was a large building uh, with a large apron out the front. I think it's about 5,000 square metres of land. Um, I did the inside building first and put another level on it as well and then built a new facility at the front of it. There was about 900,000 units. It was a, yeah, very, it was a, it was a good business, yes. Well, really it was customer awareness. I, I was under the impression you just built these things and they came. Uh, I found out that you built them and they drove past them, but they didn't know what you were doing, so they never came in. And it was a real struggle to educate the public about what service you were providing. I did go to America, like in the mid 80s, for a month, just to have a look at what was going on. Uh, but I probably should have done more of that. Then you set the thing up a bit more professionally and probably use other people's knowledge. But in Australia, that didn't exist, so it was hard to tap into. Just knowing there are other people in the same boat. Sometimes, especially in self storage facilities, when you're a, a single operator, it's a it can be a an insular type of existence. So it was good to get somewhere, have a few beers, let your hair down, and actually discuss problems that everybody had in common, and get some other view other than your view. Well, I'm still friendly with uh, Alan Contini, Chandra Hill. Alan Adams, uh, obviously we're all from Melbourne, uh, but those friendships have, have stuck solid since day one, really. Uh, just people with, I guess, common interest in self-storage then, but just common interest in generally in things other than self-storage, just socially. Uh, there was an instance where at, at North Melbourne, actually, uh, I'm sitting there just twiddling my thumbs, wondering how I'm going to get customers to realise what a great product I had. And um, in came a black uh, Range Rover, sped in, big truck behind it, and out jumps about six blokes in full gear. Got the guns, the helmets, they're all in black, the, the mod squad. And uh, guy gets out of the, the Range Rover, comes up and says, I want to have a look at units so and so and so and so. I said, well, you, know, you probably need a search warrant there, mate. Gives me the search warrant, open the, open the thing, and it turns out that the guy was a, uh, a fortune teller who was connected to a church group. But he didn't get paid in cash, he used to get paid in kind. So he'd, he'd tell your fortune and you'd give him a fridge or a washing machine or a or, you know, some sort of kitchen appliance. I did wonder, what, you know, why has a bloke got five fridges and you know, why has he got seven dryers and whatnot? And uh, we eventually found out he was an absolute scammer. Uh, funny. <laughs>